Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today we're trying something a little bit new and so I thought we would get nice and cozy. We could get intimate here together and there's something about a microphone that makes it feel more intimate and cozy. <laughs> I want to start off by saying that I am not usually a TBR kind of girl. I've always definitely been a mood reader, just picking up whatever sounds good at the moment, always searching for something to satisfy a specific kind of itch. But I've been having a bit of a hard time sticking to books recently and knowing what mood I'm in. So I thought we could put together a little bit of a fall TBR as the leaves start to turn and the weather crisps and I can finally turn my AC off. And I thought, what better way to know if you love something or will love something than to see all of their faults up close and personal from the very beginning, which is why we are going to pick this fall TBR based on the one star reviews of these I'm honestly really excited because I love one-star reviews in general, even of the books that I love. I feel like if I can read a one-star review of a book that I love and be like, they just didn't get it, not like I did, then I really do love that book. So I feel like I know kind of what to look for in terms of things that will make me actually hate a book versus be like, oh, I can get over that kind of thing. That doesn't really matter to me. So I put together a list of books that I have seen around a bit, you know, I know that they exist, but I could not tell you a single thing about them except maybe their genre. And those are the books that we're going to judge today. First on the list, I have seen a few people mention on TikTok and also Kindle keeps trying to recommend it to me. Amazon's trying to shove this one in my face and we all know how that can go. So this will be interesting. The first book is Spark of the Everflame by Penn Cole. This is not about the cover, but the cover reminds me of a fantasy book that I would have read forever ago. Like it's making me think of that book. I think it's called Immortal or Immortals, something like that. There's a butterfly. It's reminding me of that era of book covers. Let's get into the reviews. Ooh, right off the bat, we've got a zinger. I'm never trusting book talk again. This is scary to me and also a little bit controversial because I've read some really good books because of book talk. I loved One Dark Window by I want to say Rachel Gillig, Gillick, something like that, but I've also read a lot of books that I have not enjoyed so much because of TikTok. You know what I'm saying? We should be aware that we're entering dangerous territory, I feel. Special thanks to this book because I always thought of myself as an insomniac, but every time I picked it up, I'd doze off. We're getting some boring accusations here, which is interesting. And another thing that doesn't quite turn me off of a book because I can take a little boredom. I love a slow burn, even in terms of plot. Like as long as there's something to look for forward to, I can lock in pretty easily. Okay, we've got some more detail here. This book just wasn't for me. I like more fast pace and I felt this one just drug out too much. GM started out as a great character, but the longer I read, the more I wish she would be killed off. I rarely hate main characters as much as I did her. The constant voice in her head telling her to vaguely fight was enough to make me roll my eyes. Fight what? For who? I hate to say it, but these like bad book accusations that we're reading about just are not making me <laughs> turn away. And this is exactly what I meant. I get sucked into these things and sometimes it doesn't work out, but sometimes it does, you know? What if this is a new adult fantasy book that I'd enjoy? In the voice of Abby Lee Miller, Boring, yawning, sloppy, lazy. This book was so unoriginal, it hurt. I skimmed most of it. I could have told you the exact plot of this book without even reading it. Offensively terrible. This does actually sound like something that could put me off a little bit because as somebody that's been reading fantasy books and fantasy romance for a really, really long time, I do feel like a lot of the up and coming books right now that are getting some sort of virality online are pretty repetitive and redundant in terms of like the fantasy canon. You know what I mean? I think I'm going to add this book to my TBR. <laughs> If anybody has read this book and knows that I'm just setting myself up for failure here, sometimes the horse needs to learn to drink from the fountain. I don't think that applied. <laughs> The next book that I do not know anything about is Butcher and Blackbird by Bryn Weaver. 
Brian Weaver. I know this is about serial killers and I know that Heather really likes this book because she's made a lot of content about it, but I don't know anything else. Something about serial killers to me though screams fall. So let's see what the people have to say about it. Ooh, underdeveloped characters, insta-lovey, boring plot, bad writing, and awful dialogue. If you don't like any of these, don't even bother. I know I shouldn't have. If you need more information, just read the other bad reviews. I feel like most of these five stars were written by teens. I'm in my 20s and this book is bad. Not even the smut is good. My biggest mistake was not DNFing this book. God, I did not realize, I think naively, how scalding these reviews would be. Holy crap. Is everyone being held at gunpoint to act like this book is good? WTF? <laughs> if I could give this negative stars, I fucking would. I can't remember the last time a book made me so angry and it's mostly because I wanted it to be so, so good. We're starting with an optimistic perspective here, which actually makes this even more harsh because they were willing to like it. The writing was just not good. There was no world building, just because I know that Boston and West Virginia are real places doesn't mean some scene setting would go amiss. This could be dangerous for me because I'm from Boston, so I do tend to judge Boston set stories more harshly than others because I like, I, know, I don't even know that much about Boston, but I know a little. Bit. I know a little bit, you know what I mean? <laughs> My ancestors would be ashamed. Rowan and Sloane's romance was a half-baked insta-love monster. And the dialogue was mainly fluff, which contributed nothing to the flimsy shape of plot readers are presented with. All that said, the most unforgivable thing was how downright patronizing Rowan was of Sloane. She's a notorious serial killer who rips men's eyeballs out. Slay. So, you know, the constant whiny, vomit-inducing over-concern anytime she went somewhere alone or at night, not to mention the whole claiming her as my property thing, which is an overused, ridiculous, and toxic trope anyway, is not romance. It's shades of misogyny, and it was gross. <laughs> okay. I will say I'm a little bit sad that you're seeing me say this, but it will be added to the TBR. <laughs> Shifting to something that might get a rise out of people. I want to take a look at the reviews for Red Rising by Pierce Brown. I am fully aware that I just created a video in which I ranted for, I think, accumulatively over 10 minutes, probably. No way. For a while. About not being a sci-fi reader. And Red Rising is notoriously a sci-fi book. But I feel like this is one of those books where it's like, even if you don't read sci-fi, people still recommend it to you. And I don't know why. Because I never planned on reading it. <laughs> so let's take a look at some of the one-star reviews and see if it changes our mind. Oh my aching, bloody damn, gory balls. Feeling like that is a book reference that I don't understand because I haven't read it. No, please, I insist. Allow me to put myself out of my own damn misery. Okay. And then we've just got a whole bunch of hashtags. Hashtag repetitive. Hashtag info dumps. Hashtag shallow world building. Hashtag repetitive. Hashtag show don't tell. Hashtag horrible characters. Hashtag repetitive. Hashtag stupid lingo. Hashtag boring. Um, getting the sense that this person found the book repetitive and the lingo annoying. Wonder how I put that together. <laughs> I too find those two things kind of annoying in a book series. So unfortunately, right off the bat, we do have one strike for Red Rising. Okay, took me ages to get into this and then some of it was very similar to The Hunger Games. I don't know, I found a lot of it absurd and not in a good way. V conflicted. Similar to The Hunger Games is a positive in my book. I don't think I've ever read anything sci-fi-esque that's similar to The Hunger Games. There's definitely been some fantasy battle royale style books that I've read that remind me of The Hunger Games, but nothing sci-fi-ish because I don't read sci-fi. <laughs> I didn't connect or empathize with anything in Red Rising. A lot of events happened that should have had my heart beating faster and my energy level raising in order to read late into the night or very early in the morning. I couldn't get into this story thanks to info dumps, awkward use of first person point of view, uninteresting characters, and telling rather than showing. It's safe to say Red Rising is clearly not for me. This is actually really interesting because this is a perfect example of something that tells me that I might 
might like this book. Awkward use of first person point of view. I actually love, 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 love first person point of view. And I know that I'm speaking a bold truth right now because there was like some TikTok book drama about somebody saying that they didn't like reading third person POVs. I don't know. I didn't watch the video and I didn't watch any of the reactions to the video. So I do not know, but it feels I, I like I read lots of books with lots of different POVs. I just I do personally prefer first person. I just like it. I just think it's like good and fun and cool. I just like it, okay? <laughs> do I have to read a sci-fi book, guys? We've got a little bit more information on the Hunger Games aspect here, I think. Ordinarily, when I dislike a highly hyped novel, I can chalk it up to not to my taste. But in the case of Red Rising, I truly don't understand what everyone loves. The plot started out with an interesting premise, but quickly became nothing more than Hunger Games s generic kids kill kids. I can already see how that would be frustrating because the point of the Hunger Games is that the kids don't have a choice and it's like the government is doing something disgusting and it's an example of how manipulative the government can be. Yada, yada. You know why dystopians are dystopians. So I can see this book being seen as similar to the Hunger Games but like does it wrong because it's a battle royale and like not all battle royales are the Hunger Games. How many times can I say the word battle royale or the Hunger Games challenge? Okay. I'm not going to read the rest of that review to you because it spoils a handful of things and I don't want to spoil anybody that hasn't read this. But the review basically just criticizes the point of, I'm going to say it again, the battle royale in this book. <laughs> Honestly makes a lot of sense to me and it mentions something that a lot of other reviews that I glanced at have also mentioned, which is like a presence of misogyny in the text. And so overall, I just am not really interested in reading this book and I'm not gonna add it to my TBR. But if someone were to say like, no, you don't understand, like they didn't get it, you have to read this book, I would consider it. Guys, it's sci-fi, okay? Let's switch it up a little bit and take a look at Remarkably Bright Creatures by Shelby Van Pelt. It's got an octopus on the cover and I think it's a memoir? It's not. It is literary fiction. <laughs> but what matters most here is what the reviews have to say. Just looking at the graph that Goodreads has of five star to one star reviews, the ratio is insane. There are like no one star reviews for this and it has 696,000 ratings. Wow. I ordered this book because it was advertised for fans of a man called Ove. Away, but I have to insist that isn't accurate. The plot was a cute idea in theory, but it missed the mark for me and I found it very predictable and boring. The characters were uninteresting. I'm actually offended that this was compared to Frederick Bachman. I have a confession to make. I read A Man Called Owe, Owe, I'm so sorry, and I really didn't like it. I completely understand why people like it and connect to it, and I think the writing was really good. Like, I don't think it's a bad book, but it wasn't for me. And I think that's due to my personal trauma and upbringing. <laughs> and that's okay, we're all different. You would think that maybe it's similar to that book, but it's not. Remarkably Bright Creatures is not similar to that book. And that might be a positive for me, for me personally. Ooh, expected a lot more octopus. If you put an octopus on the cover, there does have to be a good amount of octopus. One of the main characters we follow is a giant man baby. Oh no! He whines who she's pain. Okay, hold on. He whines who she's pain in his girlfriend and mocks her just because she was fortunate enough to come from a loving family. Don't know exactly what this sentence is trying to say, but that does kind of suck. That is a bit of a strike against it. I really struggle to read books with, with male main characters like that. I think there are so few one star reviews. I think this is gonna go on the same list as Red Rising, to be completely honest. And even though I said that that review that said it was not like a man called Ove made me feel like it was more up my alley, now that I'm thinking about it, even putting it in like kind of a similar proximity and the fact that other people told them that it was similar to that book and so they should read it, it's putting me off a little bit. You know what? I'm gonna take a firm stance. This is not going on the TBR. On to The Housemaid by Frida McFadden, which I know is 
was another TikTok book and I have read one other Frieda McFadden book before. I gotta say, I don't remember what it was called or what it was about. I remember that being my feeling about the book in the end as well. I was like, uh, that was fine and moved on immediately. But I know that The Housemaid was like her viral book. And I do feel like mystery thrillers are perfect for the fall. It's just like a little bit creepy. It's a little bit creepy and I've kind of been on a mystery thriller kick already. So I feel like I'm I'm open to it. I'm open to the idea of The Housemaid. Whoa. This book has over 1 million and 400 thousand ratings and we're beginning the one star reviews with a little bit of vitriol here <laughs> this is the dumbest thing i have ever read i am pissed about the high rating there wasn't a single thing that made even a tiny bit of sense and it just kept getting dumber and dumber even when you didn't think it was possible and i do understand that in a mystery thriller one of the most important things is that it all ties up in a logical way at the end like it has to make sense so this is making it feel like kind of a risk Ooh, uh oh this is one of the most predictable mystery thrillers i've ever read i genuinely can't believe that it has such high ratings it uses such old and overused tropes and twists that I can't believe it's a new release from 2022. It feels at least a decade old. Since I've been on a bit of a mystery thriller kick recently, that is kind of a problem that I've been having with a lot of the ones that I've picked up. There are a few certain twists and tropes that just seem like they're so overused in the mystery thriller genre. So it's always kind of a fear of mine that one of those is gonna be used again. And I do think that the main one that I have a problem with, which is basically just like, making a woman the killer as a twist was used in the other Freedom McFadden book. Now, I won't tell you which one because I don't want to spoil that book for you if you are a Freedom McFadden enjoyer. But this makes me a little bit scared that it does kind of the same thing. I don't know if that's what happens. I don't know if that's what this book is, but if I were to add it to the TBR and it was the twist and I should have seen the warning flags, I'd be upset with myself. <sighs> Scrolling through these reviews, I have to be honest, most of them are about this book being plagiarized from another book. I haven't read it. I've got no idea. But it does kind of make me not want to read it. <laughs> I kind of wanted to add this to my TBR, even not knowing anything about it, just because I want to read some mystery thrillers this fall. So I'm not going to add this one to the TBR. But if anybody has any mystery thriller recommendations, please send them my way. I'll be on the lookout. I'll be searching for some good ones. Next is Archer's Voice by Mia Sheridan. It has like half a million ratings, which is insane. But all I know about it is that it is sad. So I'm kind of curious what the reviews will be like for a book that's supposed to be really emotional. Yup, immediately it's all just saying, I didn't feel anything, I didn't feel anything. I mean, I felt nothing. I'm in the minority here, but I felt so empty reading it. Nothing about the plot or the characters was convincing. Everything about it was so calculated and juvenile and i don't mind cliches but this book takes the cake it was cheese galore nope just no i totally understand that if something is too cliche and over the top for you you're not going to connect enough to it to feel what it's trying to make you feel am i missing something am i reading a different book i have a heart of ice maybe i don't deserve a romance ever whether in book form or in real life okay that's Come on now. Because I felt absolutely nothing reading this. Possibly some rage, but that's it. But this time, I know it's because this book was genuinely so bad. Not because I'm a picky asshole when it comes to romance. This is kind of resonating with me, I will say, because I'm also a pretty picky reader and it's kind of frustrating when you're a picky reader but you find something and you're like no this is just objectively bad and people really like it but i know that that's also like the hater side of who i am and i try to keep a little bit of a lid on her just just to keep her in check we can't be a hater all the time even if we want to. My head is literally empty. I don't know what to even think of this because of how bad it was. I have no thoughts. I've literally lost my ability to think. I do not think, therefore I am not. <laughs> oh my God. Wow, there are really few one star reviews. Oh my God, hold on. There's only 10 written one star reviews. Having only 10 one star written reviews on a book with 500 thousand ratings it puts it into perspective you know what 
I'm putting it on the TBR, okay? I've been wanting to have a book that will make me cry. And I think because it's one of those situations where it can really firmly connect with you or not, and it connected with so many people, and there are only 10 written one star reviews. I'm gonna give it a chance. On a rainy day when I need a good cry, I'm gonna give The Archer's Voice a chance. It's going on the fall TBR. We only have one more book to judge today, guys, and it's going to be Uprooted by Naomi Novak. I have never, ever, ever felt so cheated in my entire 21 years of existence. O M F. I was hooked by the synopsis and the blurbs, but oh my lord, how they have misled me. The characters literally had zero substance. The dragon, more like slimy old cranky great 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 grandpa stuck in a man's body. I think this is another good example of my mental illness because, oh... It's a grumpy dude, like, in a hot dude's body, and he's, like, a dragon. Like, like I'm kind of in. Let's see what else people have to say. What's this dragon like? <laughs> Overrated cheap fantasy with bland characters, and can you even call that a romance? Should have been blurb. Getting a little insight into the plot here. I just really hope it doesn't spoil me. <laughs> a big, dangerous, and scary enemy. A forest is threatening to swallow this fantasy world. Enter a kidnapped childish girl who has been practicing magic for less than a year and somehow qualifies as the only savior. Who also dry humps her captive known as the dragon. <laughs> what? Expect insta love after their first kiss. Fantasy elements that do the book no justice. And a forest label stating that it's a fairy tale retelling. Something that sticks out to me here is that there was insta love after their first kiss, which is actually kind of okay okay with me i feel like once you get to the point of the first kiss like the tension's broken there 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 should be feelings there i feel i actually kind of get annoyed when they have their first kiss and are clearly into each other but won't just accept their feelings unless the yearning is like top notch but in a lot of cases if it's just like okay you guys both literally like each other and there's no reason except for elongating the romance plot that you have told each other yet not even told each other but just accepted these feelings yourself get on with it so that's not the biggest red flag to me. We're doing okay here so far. I've been trying to remember the name of this book for two years to mark it as my least favorite book ever read. My search was completed today. Wow. This book is supposed to be everything that I like. Magical, creepy world, kind of beauty and the beast vibe, great romance, and great friendship. Yet I couldn't find any of these things in this book. Book. First, I couldn't even focus on this book for 10 minutes because it was so descriptive. Don't get me wrong, I do like descriptions, but it was just too much and most of the time not necessary at all. That is kind of something that annoys me in books, like just over description. I do kind of just tend to skim that kind of thing and like skip over a paragraph or two here and there. It's like, I don't need to know about the forest that deeply. I can just move on. <laughs> I feel like it's kind of obvious, but this book is definitely getting added to my TBR. It just seems like a wonderful, creepy little fairy tale fantasy for the fall. And none of these one star red flags are hard no's for me. It seems like it's kind of right up my alley. <laughs> So definitely adding this to the TBR, and while I was a little bit hopeful that we would have some more success than this, we got three books out of seven. I'm still pretty pleased with it because I, I don't usually have a TBR at all, so even just having three books to look forward to in the fall is very exciting and will be a very interesting challenge to see if I can actually read a TBR, even if it's only three books. Anyway, this was a lot of fun. I haven't really done a lot of videos just sitting down, just hanging out with you in this way. I'm really excited for the fall. I really need mystery thriller recommendations, and I still don't like sci-fi. But I love you guys. Bye!